Thank you so much for joining me. International Certificate is also known as PTE General, and many of you out there might be really familiar with that test. We've been around for quite a long time in a paper-based format, but today we're going to be talking about the online test, and so I'm really pleased to bring you new information about our online test that we're in the process of launching. For the agenda today, we have a lot of things to cover, and we're going to start with giving you an overview of what is Pearson English International Certificate, or what is PTE General, and how does it compare the paper and the computer-based tests. Uh, and then from there, we're going to go into more things around specific to the computer-based test. What does the test design look like? What do the score reports look like? What's the issue with certificates and how will that be handled? Uh, also, what does secure test delivery mean in the context of computer-based testing? I'm also going to show you a brand new user platform today called the Test Hub. And the Test Hub is a one-stop shop that we think is pretty spectacular for managing registration, uh, the actual test booking process, as well as receiving your scores. Uh, and all of that in one place. So I'll be sharing more with you about that. And then we're gonna finish our time together talking about test prep. How can you as teachers prepare your students for testing? Uh, and then we'll give you a little timeline, a sense of what's coming when, and how you can purchase the test if you're interested in that. And we'll have time at the end for questions. So just want to let you know that in Zoom, you have both a Q&A box and a chat box, as I understand. And um, if you have specific questions as we move along through the content today, please type them in to the Q&A box. That would be best because I'll have Amy help us out here and uh, answer some of those questions as she gets them, but also at the end, tell us what's coming into the Q&A box and be sure to address those things that are burning questions on your mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll give you first an overview of what Pearson English International Certificate is. So Pearson English International Certificate, our name changed just in this past year. We have been known for 10 or more years as PTE General. And before that, we were the London Test of English. We have been around for, gosh, maybe 30 years or so. And, and this is content that is tried and true. It does a really good measurement of candidates' proficiency level with all four skills being tested during the assessment, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. The test is available at all six levels of the CEPHER, A1 through C2. And that's important because not all our competitors have that, um, as well as it is awarded by Edexcel, also something our competitors cannot say. And Pearson Edexcel delivers literally millions of exams every year. And that's really important because we are backed and awarded by an organization that knows testing inside and out. We have the validity and strength of that history um, in this test. And all of these, um, all levels of the exam are recognized by a variety of national education authorities, universities, and employers in various countries. Uh, if you wanna see a list of those, they're on our website. Just please have a look by country and see who's, who's recognized PTE General and now Pearson English International Certificate. And finally, we are regulated by Ofqual. And that means that as a regulating body, we don't, make, um, we don't make quick decisions about making changes on things. This computer-based form of the test has been several years in the making, and we alert Ofqual of changes as we have them on this test. That's really important to know that there's oversight of this test. And again, we don't make changes lightly without a lot of consideration and a lot of validation. Now you might, if you're not too familiar with our test yet, you might be wondering who are the test takers? What's the profile of the learners that take this test? Well, we have reached out to candidates in a variety of countries and learned more from them about what they're using this test for, what they use our competitors tests for, and what they're looking for in a future test. And so we've got some profiles along the left-hand side of this slide. Carmen, who's in Mexico City pursuing a degree in business. 
She is a college uh, student who intends to graduate at a certain proficiency level. So that's one profile of a learner. Second profile of a learner we have here is a high school student. And oftentimes the high school age candidates who take our test are um, looking to graduate from high school with a B2 or something that allows them entrance into a college of their choice. And the third profile of a learner is Pavel here at the uh, bottom of the screen, who is a young professional and looking to improve his opportunities in the job market. These are the kinds of people who take this test. And when we ask them, what is your primary consideration when you're choosing an English language assessment provider? The top thing they say is the type of certificate they're going to get, because this kind of a test issues a certificate that allows them to move on with their lives and go accomplish those objectives they have set out for themselves. But after that, after they have found the right test that gives them the certificate, that gets them into the college, gets them the jobs that they want, then they are looking for flexibility. And they're looking for flexibility for date, for time, for the location that they take their test, and to some degree, the speed at which they receive their results. But the flexibility pieces are way more important to them. In addition to test takers themselves, we've also reached out to teachers and asked them questions about English language proficiency testing. Do you have more or less choice nowadays? And how important is it to prove your English language proficiency in these times? Um, especially with COVID this past couple of years, we were curious if teachers thought that's changing the landscape at all. And what we heard loud and clear from teachers is that proving your English language proficiency is more important than ever, um, or no change, which means it's still really important, really important to teachers, really important to students in order to achieve their life objectives to prove this English proficiency. We also have feedback from teachers about computer-based testing, because as we have been developing this, our, in the back of our minds, we've been asking ourselves, is this going to be a really important future step for us? And we know that, um, that it is, based on what teachers are telling us, that it is very important to provide equal access to candidates. And we can do that with digital testing very effectively. So you'll see teachers saying, very important to provide computer-based testing, 72%. So when we look at the data from teachers and from test takers and learners, we wanted to build a solution that meets the need of both. And so what we have here is a list of things that are benefits of taking Pearson English International Certificate. Uh, it's about computer-based testing, but a lot of these benefits actually come with our paper-based test too. So I'm going to uh, highlight a couple of these um, because they are true for both our paper-based and our computer-based variant, whichever your candidates choose to take. And maybe you'll have a mix. Maybe some candidates will want to continue on paper and others will want to take computer, and that would be totally fine. So what you can see in the upper left corner of the screen about authentic content. One benefit to this test is that the, the content in it is very authentic. It is um, content that is pulled from um, real life experiences, uh, real media events, real things happening in life, and having candidates respond to that. And so that real English um, and real things happening in the real world is, is really effective in, in helping us know if candidates can respond appropriately to what's going on in their world. So the content is made up of authentic content and the test types really test uh, an, the ability to communicate. It's not a memorization of vocabulary or grammar um, or grammar rules. This is about really understanding contextually how to use English. So that is true of our paper and our computer-based test. Accredited. I mentioned this before, but at Excel is our awarding body and Ofqual uh, is our regulator. So we are really uh, making sure that we have the very best backing of organizations that are reputable um, and it gives our tests a lot of validity, whether that is the paper or the computer-based form of it. Then looking at the right-hand side of the page where we have inclusive and trusted, it's inclusive. This is an inclusive test, whether on paper or computer, because 
uh, it is really important for teenagers as well as young adults uh, and at every level of the SEPR band for different reasons. People are using an A1 test generally for something very different than they're using a C2 test, but you can take it at any level, uh, at any age, pretty much from 14 and up and trusted. Uh, we have a lot of employers recognizing this test today, universities and government organizations, and that will be true whether it's paper or computer. But right in the middle of this page, we have two stars here that really speak to the benefits of computer-based testing, the accessibility and the completeness in one test. And so let's talk about accessibility a little bit. Now, the accessible part of this test means that you can take it pretty much on demand uh, when you need it, when you want it, and where you want it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today. So the accessibility that computer-based testing delivers is um, really unlike anything we can deliver on paper today, or that any of our competitors could deliver on paper today. When it comes to completeness, what I mean here and why computer-based testing is so important to candidates is that they can get all of their skills tested in one sitting. Uh, reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills are all assessed at one time in one sitting. There's no reason for a candidate to have to come back a second time for the test. It's all done at one session in less than two hours. And so those are the real big benefits we know from talking with candidates over the last couple of years. Um, they want that efficiency. They want that accessibility. And uh, we can deliver that with our computer-based test. When we look at the paper-based and the computer-based variants, there's another way of looking at some of the same information I just shared with you. These are both four skills, general English speaking, uh, reading, writing, listening tests. So both the paper and the computer-based variant address that, and they both earn a certificate regardless of what variant. They're both for about the same demographic of learner. But where we really start to see the difference in that computer-based testing is the on-demand component, is the ability to test from home that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes, and the quicker score turnaround time of two weeks or less. Uh, we have some exciting things to talk about later this year with regard to extended certification uh, and achieving a lower level than tested for some candidates. Uh, we'll, we'll have that available for both uh, paper this year, computer next year. And we have a predictive practice test that I'll tell you more about today and our mobile practice app that's free. But as you can see, the computer-based test gives us some more flexibility. Those things that the candidates are looking for, those things that teachers are looking for around accessibility, um, quicker turnaround, and um, that ability to test from home. Let's dig in now a little bit to the test design because this is gonna be important for you to know if you're preparing candidates for uh, the computer-based test, it's going to be a little bit different. So you can see in the upper right corner of this slide that there are relatively the same number of questions on the paper in the computer-based test, right about 52, 53, depends on the level, but it's, it's right in there. So it's not as if there are more questions on the computer-based test really, um, but they are different kinds of questions. So what you'll see in the table here is I've provided you with the item type on the left-hand side, and it shows you which paper or computer um, variant where they show up. So you'll see in the paper-based test, for instance, that there's short multiple choice items in listening, and those are primarily in the paper-based test. But on the computer side, what we're doing is we're um, testing integrated skills, not just listening, but listening and reading and listening and speaking. Um, or reading and speaking and reading and writing. So we're not really isolating the skills as much as we did on the paper-based test. The computer-based test, they're much more integrated because frankly, that's how we communicate. Um, when we're out in the real world, we're communicating in integrated fashion. Uh, we're listening and responding. We're not just listening. Um, and so that's a really important change in the test, the test types. And we're going to talk about how you can prepare candidates for those kinds of integrated skills in just a few minutes. The other thing that's different between paper and computer is the length of the test. So I mentioned the item number is about the same between paper and computer. 
But where you really start to see a difference in the delivery is that the computer-based test is shorter. Uh, it's all under two hours. So uh, particularly at B2, C1, and C2 level, you'll see on the paper-based test that it's about between um, you know, two and a half hours and three hours to take a, a C1 or a C2 test. But when you're taking a computer-based variant at those levels, it's, it's under two hours, much quicker. And um, so that, you know, that allows a little more flexibility for the candidate who is a, um, you know, time-starved person. They, they have a lot going on in their lives and they want to get this done as quick as possible. We think that is going to be a benefit to them. They have to sit at a test a little bit shorter amount of time. We will have accessibility for special needs in this computer-based variant. And uh, we will be able to accommodate things like ADHD, speech impairments, sight impairments, diagnosed learning difficulties, um, dyslexia, that sort of thing, and physical disabilities too. What it will require though, is the candidates provide some medical evidence of the need to do that. And then we can make a longer version of the test available to them. So if you're thinking about candidates who may need longer than two hours, to complete a test. Uh, as long as they have the medical evidence of that need and they requested it in advance of the test, we can make that available for them so they can take a bit longer on the test. Um, in addition to that, comfort aids are certainly welcome um, if candidates need tissues or cough drops or pillow or uh, eyeglasses, hearing aids, neck braces, all those kinds of things. Of course, they have to provide them for themselves, but they can be admitted into a test center as well as part of the online experience from home. So let's talk about scores for a moment. So the beauty of the, um, the scores on this computer-based test is we can tell you a whole lot more about what the candidate can and cannot do um, within the test. Because it's digital, we have an ability to see a lot more of what's going on behind the scenes. So on the right hand side of this page, you're actually looking at a score report and this candidate, we can see how they're doing in each uh, part of the test and in discrete skills, listening, reading, speaking and writing, pulling that out of those integrated skill items and then assessing just how good are they? Are they at level? Are they below level? Are they above level, quite frankly? Um, so that is going to give the candidate a whole lot more information to work with than they have today on the paper based test. But as we are um, working on getting these scores ready and ensuring that the scoring is equivalent to what the candidate would have experienced on the paper-based test, we're gonna take a bit longer to get those scores out this year. So candidates who start sitting this test now or in October may wait until the end of the year or even January to receive a score report. But in 2022, uh, as of January, we should be able to turn those scores around within two weeks of testing. So much quicker score turnaround time. And the other great thing about these scores is that the candidates will be able to look them up in their test hub account, um, not having to wait for the certificate to be mailed to them, although we will do that too. They will be able to log into test hub to see those scores. And we think they're gonna find that really valuable. Here's another look at that digital score report for the computer-based test. I showed you page one, and then on page two, what they get in the score report is more instructive comments about what books they can use, what activities they can do to improve their score or get to level. So this is going to be really useful to you as teachers to be able to use this as their um, remediation plan for those candidates, maybe who aren't scoring at the level that um, they ought to. So we think they'll find this extremely valuable. I mentioned before that whether they take the print test, print version of the test or the computer-based version of this test, everyone earns a certificate if they pass the test. So this is what the certificate looks like. It will look exactly the same, whether you've taken the paper or the computer variant. It will be mailed. It will be mailed either to the school that has registered the candidate or it will be mailed directly to the candidate's home, depending on who purchased the test and where you want them to show up but this is the same certificate. They can um, expect to see it, hard copy in the mail. 
Next up, we're gonna talk about where the test can be delivered. And the important takeaway here is regardless of where this test is taken, there is security involved in every uh, instance. Let's start with authorized test centers. So Pearson View test centers are, have a very large footprint around the world. And we are setting up some of these test centers right now to be able to deliver this exam. Candidates will be expected to arrive a little bit in advance of their test at one of these Pearson View test centers, and they must agree to test rules and regulations. They have to bring an ID with them. We will be collecting, taking pictures of IDs, collecting signatures, taking a photograph of the candidate, because that photograph will show up on their score report. It's one of the ways of authenticating this is truly the person who took the test. The test takers will go into this environment and sit at a dedicated workstation. And they can go at their own pace within that two hour period. Um, there are some exercises that will be timed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with regard to how to prepare your students for that. Um, and there will be an optional break, whether they take it in the test center or at home. The test taker is going to be monitored for the duration of the test. If they're in a test center, it'll look a lot like this. Uh, a monitor will be watching candidates as they take that test. If the candidate chooses to take the test from home and you're okay with that, your school's okay with that, they may also choose an at-home um, online proctored appointment. And that proctor will be watching from the computer. So really important that the candidate has a webcam and some other technology things we'll talk about in just a minute. But the candidate will be watched the entire time that uh, they're taking the test from home. So this is gonna be available starting in October. Uh, candidates will do a system test. They will have to take a picture um, of themselves, their ID, show that to the proctor. They will have to take pictures of their environment in front of them, behind them, and to the side of them and submit those photos. And um, the proctor will be watching the entire time to make sure nothing changes in that environment. So it is very secure in that they're being watched the entire time, even from the comfort of home. Here's a variety of other things the candidates that want to test from home need to be aware of. They need to have a good internet connection. Um, it has to be a wired internet connection. They have to have a wired headset and or earbuds like I do today, this can work too. Um, they're going to perform a system check ahead of time to be sure that their internet is suitable. They have a webcam, that their um, computer is going to operate correctly. And there are other things that um, they'll have to do, like shutting down other things on their computer while they're testing. They'll need to set up an environment where they have a private, quiet space that is really test conditions. And interestingly, um, we've had some testing going on just this last couple of weeks in our beta. Uh, and one of the challenges has been kicking family out of the room so that you can take this test in a quiet environment. That's going to be one of those challenges that um, we need to tell candidates about ahead of time. Now, some candidates may not be able to set up that quiet space in their home, in which case they may want to choose um, to do online proctoring from their test center, from your school. That's a possibility. So your program may choose to actually deliver the online proctored computer-based test to individuals in a classroom, in a library, in a place where they can be assured that it will be quiet and secure. If this is the case, what you will have to know is that the candidate must be alone in that room. So it has to be a space that is, you know, really just for them. And so uh, that's something you would have to make, oh, make them aware of, but also make your um, institution aware of ahead of time. And the only issue we foresee with this is that if there's any firewalls that are built in because of uh, it being a business or because of it being a school, um, some of those firewalls can cause some issues. So you'll want a technical person to check this out and do the system check ahead of time. This is a real viable option. Um, and many people are considering this approach. They can't make a private space available at home. But regardless of where the test is done, security is going to be a priority. Security is a priority in how the test is delivered, in who it's delivered to, and frankly, in how the results are delivered as well. So results are only gonna be available to those who have a password to get into Test Hub and get those results. Or the people who receive the results by paper 
Also know that there's security features on that paper certificate such that it cannot be photocopied or changed or altered in any way. So watermark, there's a hologram. There are security features built in um, from start to finish with this test. All right, so next up, what I want to do is share with you what this new user platform looks like, how it can be used, how you can use it as a teacher, but also how candidates will use Test Hub. And the first uh, slide I have here shows you a quick image of what my platform looks like when I log in. Test Hub is a one-stop shop. Um, it is a place where you can register your candidates, where candidates will eventually be able to register themselves, find appointments, book their tests, check their results, and then buy things in the future like practice materials. Um, today, you'll see along the left-hand side uh, where the candidate's profile will be there. Resources, if I had some tools that I had purchased, you'll find them in my resources. My upcoming tests will show me any appointments that I have in the future. Um, I would also be able to search for my results here and um, any of the orders that are outstanding. But in this case, I have a readiness test ready for me, and I can launch it right from here, from this platform. Now the actual exam, of course, we wouldn't launch from this platform. That's not the secure platform. We're gonna be launching that from home with OnView or launching in a test center, whichever is um, best for your students. But you can check out uh, Test Hub anytime you like. You can even set up an account today if you wanted to. And you go to english-testhub.pearson.com to see how this works. One of the things I offered as part of this session is if there are any teachers out there that want to take a readiness test, um, please make sure you email us and I'll have an email address for you at the end of the slides here. Um, you would take your readiness test from this platform and have a real experience with it. So we want to give you a chance to do that if you'd like. So here's how it's going to look for any candidates that are taking the test in this next month or so. If your institution, purchases some tests in the next couple of months, they, you will actually put their name in, uh, into the test hub and it will trigger an email to the candidate. So you can see in the top part of the slide here, I received an invitation to take a CT test. So it greets me, it tells me my institution would like me to book this test. And with this email, there is a direct link to test hub. I click on go to my tests, and I am taken to this page where I'm able to click a book now button. Very simple. Candidates will have to register themselves. And this is kind of an important step because whatever goes into this registration screen is what needs to be on the candidate's ID when they show up to take the test. And that's quite important because again, from a security standpoint, we want these people to be who they say they are. So really important that if you do buy tests on behalf of your students, they are the ones who fill out this detail about their name, their date of birth, their address, um, their city, their state, their country, zip code, postal code, et cetera. They will be told on this page that this needs to match exactly what's on their state issued ID. Um, and if there's a discrepancy, they may be turned away from the exam. That's why it's so important that the candidate completes these details. After they complete those details, they're taken to this page, which allows them to, first they accept the terms and conditions of the testing, and then they select a date and time. And as you can see on this page, uh, in June, for instance, they could have taken it any day that week, and on the right-hand side, any pretty much any hour of the day. And that's the beauty of that at-home testing. They could take it in the middle of the night if that's the time that works for them and there's an available spot and they can ensure that they're gonna have a quiet private space to take the test, they can do it at that time. So that's the beauty again of this on-demand testing with computer-based testing, they can choose the date and time that works for them. Once they've selected that date and time, they'll get a confirmation email, but they'll also be able to go into Test Hub and remind themselves, okay, that's the date I signed up for, that's the start time in my time zone, 
and that's the duration of the test. They will be reminded if they're doing this from home that they have to do a system test and make sure that their computer, their equipment, their internet connection is good enough for them to test from home. So that system test is reminded on here as well as um, acceptable spaces, making sure you have a clear desk, making sure that there's no one else in the space with you, that it's quiet enough for us to pick up a good recording of the voice. And then finally, um, reviewing the ID policy is also a good idea here because we want to be sure the candidates come with an ID. Um, and if they're underage, their parents have to come with an ID. So depending on the age of the candidate, we'll serve up different reminders at this point on test. So right now, the, the way that this works is an institution or a school or um, an organization uh, will be purchasing on behalf of the candidate and the candidate will then go in and pick their date and time. But in the future, the very near future, candidates will be able to make the purchase themselves, start their journey themselves via englishtesthub.pearson.com. So we'll have more to share with you in coming months on that. Um, but for now, uh, we will be um, selling primarily to institutions, to teachers, to schools, to employers who want their candidates to take this test. So we've gone through a lot um, so far. We've talked a lot about uh, the benefits of computer-based testing, how we differ from the paper-based test, what are the underpinnings of both of our exams that make this a really strong option for you and your candidates? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, great, but how am I gonna prepare my students for a computer-based test? And I'm happy to report we have lots and lots of resources for you to do that. So we have something called the Pearson English Warm-Up Practice App, and this is a totally free, um, available now, solution for you to get your candidates familiar with computer-based tests. We launched this just a couple of months ago with the computer items, paper-based items have been there for about a year, but candidates can log in uh, via their phone today if they'd like. Uh, it's available for both Android and iPhone. Um, you can download Pearson English Warm-Up and have them get familiar with items immediately. And there's some, some fun new features in the app now where they can see how they're performing against other people in their country, other people globally. Uh, there's a way to choose an avatar. Uh, you can try all four language skills and uh, get a real sense for what the computer-based items are going to be like. And I think what else really makes this a unique choice for your candidates is the fact that there is a predictive readiness test ready to go. And this is something, again, I mentioned earlier, you as teachers, if you'd like a free readiness test to see what level you're at, and if you would pass the level that you want to take in the test, um, we're happy to send you a free readiness test voucher. So just get in touch with us at international certificate at pearson.com. And you can take a 45 minute test that will tell you if you're ready, potentially ready or not ready to pass that level of the international certificate exam. You'll get a detailed score report, much like I showed you for the actual exam. This tells you for each skill, how ready you are and what you need to do to get there. So if you're potentially ready, what else could you be doing to build your skills in that area? Um, we think this is gonna be really important for building your confidence, that your students are ready to go. And so if you have a chance to take this yourself, I think you'll get a sense for how we can build your confidence and your students' confidence too. So please uh, reach out to us and, and take this for yourself, see what kind of um, experience you have with it so you can share it appropriately with your students. We also have a lot of other materials on our website. So you'll see the website is at the bottom of this slide here, pearsonenglish.com international certificate. In the upper right corner is pictured our teacher lesson plans. And I mentioned before that, you know, some of the items are going to be different in this computer-based test than what they're used to in the paper-based test. So how do you get them ready for this? You can use these lesson plan ideas and it takes each item in the test, it gives you real practical ideas on how to uh, represent this in your classroom. And if, um, if you're not having enough time to go through that yourself, 
please come back next Thursday when Melanie Drake is going to walk you through some of these teacher lesson plans and the pedagogy behind the test. Um, and she'll give you a lot more detail about how to use this information. In the middle of the page on the right, we have a test tips guide. So this can be used even by your, your students themselves, where they can look at the items themselves and say, okay, this is what I need to do to prepare myself. Um, so where there's teacher exercises in the top uh, example, in the middle example here, this is where candidates can just with some of the um, kinds of items that they're going to see in the test via the app and, and get familiar with them. And this gives them tips on how to prepare appropriately. Finally, at the bottom, the picture there is a familiarization guide, both for teachers and for test takers, to give you just a little bit more information about everything behind the test. And a lot of what I covered today is in this familiarization guide. Then finally, an awful lot going on in this slide, I know. Uh, there's an awful lot of materials that we're preparing if you want to talk about this test with your students or um, others in your community. Posters and banners and recognition brochures some presentations with social media assets. Uh, so lots and lots of good stuff that will be coming your way so that you can talk more about the test. We also have a new product coming out very soon called the Question Bank. This has more than 1,600 digital reading, writing, speaking, and listening test items for candidates to try out. And, uh, and it can be purchased um, later this year at a discounted price for a time. Uh, and maybe you can talk with your Pearson sales team and get a, a discount of some kind on bundling both the question bank and the tests themselves. It's a three month subscription window for candidates. Uh, and uh, next year we'll have some new bells and whistles for teachers and for um, the platform that shows results. So um, this year will be limited use and uh, also some discounted pricing. We think it's gonna be a really good option for you to help your candidates familiar with test items and try them out. Again, for teachers and for anyone in your community that wants to learn more about the test, we have this series of webinars, Thursdays throughout September. Um, you're attending this first one now. We're gonna repeat these, however, in November. So if you have colleagues who've missed this, because it's a little earlier, early in the fall for uh, teachers to get engaged in this right now, um, have them come back in November. We'll repeat this series. Next week, we have Melanie Drake, as I mentioned, talking about pedagogy behind the test. Uh, in a couple more weeks, we will have Carmen talking about remote proctoring, and we'll have Ben talking about the test design and scoring and the human element behind it all. Um, and that will be at the, toward the end of September. So please come back to learn more. This is our timeline. Uh, we've been in beta testing now since July. So we've had maybe about 200 test takers so far trying it out, giving us feedback. Uh, we've been learning a lot in the process. It's been a, a very good experience for us. But our stage launch begins in October, and that means that you can buy the test at that point in time. It will be at a discounted price. Um, that price, of course, is going to vary by country and location. Uh, you'll be able to take the test. Your candidates will be able to take the test starting in October. But score reports won't be issued till January, so there is a delay in the score report. And that has a lot to do with um, the equivalence exercises that we're doing between paper and, and computer-based tests right now, as well as the standard setting for the past um, cut scores, and that kind of thing. And that takes quite some time to make sure that it is uh, an equivalent experience uh, for our candidates. So that's what's underway um, during October to December. So you might be wondering how you purchase this test. Well, you can reach out to your local Pearson representative if you're interested in doing some testing this fall. Uh, as I mentioned before, the computer test will be discounted price uh, for the remainder of this year. And score reports could take several weeks to receive. So um, if someone needs a score report immediately, probably stick with the paper-based test. But if they can wait a little while for that score report and they want a digital experience, um, and have a choice of dates and times to take it, then the computer test is the way to go. Uh, in terms of how candidates can purchase, candidates can purchest the test themselves at EnglishTestHubPearson.com beginning toward the end of this year. And then finally, um, you might be asking how much is it going to cost? 
that price is going to vary by country. And it will likely cost more than the paper-based test does today. However, it will probably be something less than the Cambridge Main Suite equivalent. So it's right in, I think, a pretty sweet spot from a pricing standpoint. But you can check with your local Pearson representative to get actual pricing uh, for your area. So a few final thoughts before we get to your questions. Um, what do I want you to remember from this presentation? Well, I'd like you to remember that the computer-based test was really designed to meet the needs for flexibility. Test takers flexibility, teachers needs for flexibility. Uh, it's a quick test. It's less than two hours and it's convenient to book. And this was a real pain point from some of the test takers we've talked to in our research efforts over the last couple of years. Um, this being able to book when they need it, where they need it, really important that anywhere, anytime, um, secure test access uh, is really important to them. And we think it's important to you too. This exam, computer-based variant, will have equivalent results to the paper-based test and paper certificates will be issued by post. So regardless of whether you're taking the paper test or the computer test, paper certificates will be available. We've designed this computer test with lots of supporting material for candidates and for teachers. But if you see something that's missing, we want to hear from you. Please let us know what else we can provide to you to make preparing for this test uh, just as uh, convenient as possible. And finally, international certificate is more than just a test. There's a lot of things supporting teachers and candidates. As we mentioned, there's a lot of good support, efficient processes in terms of registration and booking and uh, taking this test from home. And this is a certificate that doesn't expire. No expiration date on our certificates. So once a candidate takes it, we're hoping that um, they, they use that for the rest of their life. Um, to prove their competency and get on with their goals and objectives. On the last slide here, I have both my email address and our generic email address, international certificate at Pearson.com. Please use either one of these if you'd like a readiness test, a free readiness test for yourself, uh, or you'd like to learn more about the test and you didn't get a question answered today that was a burning question for you. Um, please reach out to us so that we can answer those questions. And I think now I am going to ask Amy to join us and tell us what questions have come in. Thanks, Jane, for our presentation. It was really great to hear. We have got so many questions come through, so I'm just going to jump right into it. So first of all, do we expect people who want to take this test from home? Yes, I think we do expect people will want to take this test from home. We actually did some research uh, about two months ago where we reached out to more than 700 candidates who are out there waiting to take a general English test, not just international certificate, but our competitor test. And we asked them, is this a COVID effect? Is, are people wanting to take the test from home because it's due to COVID or is this kind of a long-term need? And it came across loud and clear. Candidates are looking for this for a long-term need. It, they like taking the idea of taking a test from home in their own space with their own equipment. Um, and the convenience of that is just gonna be really important, we think, going forward. So this isn't just a COVID factor. Uh, we think that this is a long-term uh, table stakes factor with regard to testing. Brilliant. So we've had quite a lot of questions come through about the resources that you've shared. So specifically, um, how can our attendees today learn more about the teacher tools that you referenced? Yeah, they're all on our website right now. Um, so make sure that you go to Pearson English uh, forward slash international certificate, and you will find a lot of those teacher resources there if you want to have a look right away. Or you could also come back next Thursday when Melanie Drake is gonna walk you through those teacher resources. So um, I think that you will find that to be a really entertaining and valuable um, way to spend your time next Thursday. So please come back and, and listen in to that webinar. Brilliant, thank you so much. So um, going on to the other questions. Um, again, back to resources. You mentioned quite a few test taker resources during the presentation. Um, is there anything you want to highlight, any specific book that could help people prepare? 
Hmm. Um, gosh, well, we have correlations to several of the um, courseware books that are out there. You don't need one specific book to help you prepare for this test, but if you want to use some of the exercises that are correlated in our score reports, um, you could use Wider World, Speak Out, uh, Gold Experience. Um, these are books that we have mapped to the outcomes on the score report. So actual examples of what exercises to explore in those books are available in the score report. So once a candidate completes either the readiness test or the test itself, um, they are able to then use those resources to study further. Brilliant, thank you. So going back to the actual test itself, are you able to dive in a bit more to how the invigilating will be done? Um, so it's not, uh, it, it, there's a difference between invigilating and proctoring as we see it. So invigilating in the paper-based test really involves having a live person in the room with a large group of students, right? So with the computer-based variant, what we are doing there is we're having smaller groups of students in a test center experience being watched by more of an administrator type, not a teacher necessarily, an administrator in a Pearson View test center would be watching a group of candidates, a very small group of candidates as they take the test. In the online proctoring environment, again, it's kind of a one proctor watching a small group of students taking uh, the test, but you're alone in the room. Um, and the, the proctor may have several different rooms they're watching. They're watching one student at a time in each individual room. So that's kind of the difference. I think that, you know, invigilation in the paper-based world is about watching a very large group of students. Invigilation of the future is watching a very small group of students. And I think there's still more security there. Great, thank you. So back to the test, while well, we're still with the test, is there a specific time of day that people will be able to take the test? Is it say um, test sessions will be available say 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or um, does that vary? Yep, that's really gonna vary. If you choose a test center, like a Pearson View test center to take the test at, they're gonna have the nine to five type hours, yes. Um, but if you choose at home, testing, you can literally take it in the middle of the night if there's a session available. I showed the screen where there's a variety of options throughout the day that are going to be available. And as long as there's a option at 12.01 a.m., a uh, candidate can take it at 12.01 a.m. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's actually, actually an option now with the on-demand scheduling. Brilliant for night owls. That would be perfect yes. if I needed the test. <laughs> So another question that's come through, how can our attendees reach their Pearson representatives to find out more about the test options in their country? Yeah, I think the best thing to do would be to go to um, your Pearson.com and look at your country options because um, some countries have Pearson people identified and some don't. Um, if you don't, then contact us at international certificate at Pearson.com and we'll put you in touch with someone. Brilliant, thank you. So I have a question now about the readiness test for teachers. Can this be reused? So it's a one-time use, um, so you'll, you, but you could um, actually possibly take it as a group. So um, one thing that I've seen used rather effectively, if there's a group of teachers that wanna take um, a test together and see how it comes out, you can do that. Um, you would just have one computer and a few of you sit around the computer and answer the questions together. Um, I think that could be an interesting way to see what the questions are and, and have more people take it. But every teacher that is attending today can have a free one. So give it a try, um, see what your score report results in. And, uh, and, and the beauty of taking it on your own for yourself is that if you don't like the outcome, no one else has to see it. <laughs> so you can even purposefully do poorly to see what your score report comes out like because you'll get lots of recommendations perhaps um, for how to improve. And that's that's a good thing to see. That's brilliant. That's really useful, that is. So going back to um, teacher resources, is there any kind of training? I know you mentioned lesson plans, but do we have anything further than that? 
that could train teachers to support their students to get this certification? Hmm. Well, we have the app, of course, and that gives them item types and descriptions. The, um, the test tips document is a PowerPoint slide presentation at um, two different levels of the test. So it's separated by like A1, A2, and then um, the B and C levels and gives you tips all along the way for each item type, how to help students prepare for that item type. One example I can think of is um, the dictation item. In our dictation item, ca candidates listen to something and then um, have to repeat it or read something and have to repeat it. And there's some actual tips on how to do that really effectively. So if you use that presentation, you'll be able to see that ahead of time and actually practice with it um, a little bit and, and give candidates a heads up. Um, this is coming in the computer based test. Brilliant, thank you. So going back to the test again, um, we have someone here who wants to know if there is a age range for the test. So for example, can um, people below the age of 14 take the test? You know, yes, um, they can. However, underage candidates, anyone under 18 is going to require that they have uh, parental permission to take it. Because there's terms and conditions involved. There's, uh, if they do decide to take this from home, actually, that's going to be the best way for a 14 year old to do it. They're going to have to have a parent actually um, be on the screen initially with a proctor and uh, agree that their candidate can be videotaped during the test. So 14 year olds, yes, can take it. It's better geared toward the older teenager just because of the content. Um, but yes, 14 year olds can take it. They take it today. I'm going to be honest. On paper-based test, we have 14 year old candidates, 15 year olds, 16 year olds. Um, but a lot of 14 year olds take the test today and they will be able to in the future. They just have to have a parent or a guardian or a teacher or someone uh, giving permission, showing an ID, at the time that the test is being taken. That's great. And that's probably more accessible being able to take that test from home rather than having them go to the test center. Right. And a 14 year old will not be admitted to a test center. That's the other thing that's important to know. You have to be 16 to enter a test center. Um, so 14 and 15 year olds would have to take the test from home. That's great to know. So I have a few questions here about the test format that so I'm hoping you might be able to answer. So are these speaking and listening um, item types and sections, are they the same as they were in PT general or has that changed? In the computer based test, they are different types of items. So um, while there is a describe a picture in the computer based test, much like there is in the, um, the paper based form of the test, uh, they're more integrated skills. So you're going to be speaking and reading and speaking, and, you know, listening and speaking, and they're more integrated item types than they are in the paper-based test, which is much more discrete in terms of now this is the listening section and this is the reading section and this is the writing section, much more integrated. Um, so yeah, they're very different um, that way. And that's why I think it's really important that teachers get familiar with the item type tips as well as that um, the teacher lesson plans to get a sense for how they're different. So going back to um, some of the slides earlier in the presentation, are you able to elaborate a bit more on the special accommodations that we offer for international certificate? Yeah, so there are a variety of accommodations, but um, that, that have a need for more time on the test. Um, but there are also some things that we can do on screen um, with background color, with font size, um, with Zoom text, things of that kind. So I think if you have any further questions about accommodations, please get in touch with us at international certificate at pearson.com and we're happy to respond to specific needs around accommodations. Thank you so much for that, Jane. So we are nearly at time, so I'm going to call it with these questions. As Jane's mentioned earlier, if there is something um, that we didn't get to, please feel free to reach out to either Jane's email address on the screen or the international certificate address there. Um, these will both be included in the follow-up email, plus links to all the resources mentioned and a recording of the session. Um, before we hit time, Jane, is there anything you want to finish with? No, just to say thank you everyone for taking your time today to learn more about the test and uh, we hope to tell you a lot more about it in the coming weeks. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thanks. Bye. Bye now.